Hello, I'm Panos Kodzathanasis, and this is ASEAN Movie Pulse Interviews. Today, I am here with Stephen Lopez, whose film uh, Hito just screened in uh, Vienna Shorts. How are you, Stephen? I, I'm I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm okay, fine. okay, great, great. Okay, so first question. Uh, I have to admit that uh, Cavan de la Cruz is one of my favorite filmmakers of all time. And so I saw that you work with him as a sound recordist at some point. Can you tell me a bit about your collaboration? Yeah, um, I worked with, I first worked with him for Balangiga, Howling Wilderness. It was a really hard shoot. It was, it was like going through war, I think. Oh, really? <laughs> Because it was the environment was really bad. Because we had to shoot in a signal number two storm, Ooh. stuff like that, and everything's like uh, what's this like more stream of consciousness with Kevin. So it's kind of tough, like uh, guessing what what what's what's going to happen next. So it mm. was a quite challenging experience, but it was fun. It was it was really great, but. <laughs> It was really scary at the time when you're when you're at his shoot because yeah it was a it was really a big storm when when we were shooting. Hmm. But but how do you record sound during a storm? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, we we used a boom microphone and a, a windscreen, then we alternated to uh to a second mic. We dried the other mic, then we oh. used the dry mic. <laughs> It was okay. quite challenging. At the same time, I think we did quite a okay job because uh, I think the po post sound for that was really quite tight because they were rushing for a deadline for the uh, local festival mm -hmm. it was going to premiere. So uh, it was quite okay despite everything that happened during the shoot. Okay, okay, that's good. And so tell me a bit about uh, Hito for starters. What about the title? It's Japanese, right? Or is it something else? No, it's 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 a uh, Filipino Filipino ah. for catfish. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah. But but uh, apparently it's uh, also a Japanese the Japanese word for human. So I was quite surprised. Ah, okay. It, ah. it was actually my sound designer who said that it was Daryl. Daryl, our sound designer, said. Uh, Hey, do you know that Hito means human? Oh, I didn't know that. And yeah. the Chinese characters we used for the for the for the title uh, <laughs> is quite representative of what the movie is actually. Uh, yeah. yeah, and considering that you have a human catfish at some point, uh, I thought there was something there. But <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah, okay. it was pure co coincidence. <laughs> I was I was quite surprised. I said, "Oh, really? Oh, well." <laughs> I just said, oh, I, I, we thought of that. We thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. And tell me a bit about the inspiration behind the story. How did you came up with this crazy thing? Well, it started out, I wish it was really something profound. Wait a minute. My cat is... Uh, get away. Again. Uh, <laughs> it was quite... I, I wish it was something like really smart, but we wanted to make like at the beginning to make something very stupid. Like I said, oh, what if there's a talking catfish and he transforms? <laughs> then, of course, we can't we can't just roll with that. Right. So uh, we had to develop it further. Um, it was part of a film lab called uh, at the time it was called Globe Studio Short Film Lab. Mm -hmm. That's where we. Uh, Develop the script further, and all the other elements came in through that lab. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The politics, all those Marcos things. Mm -hmm. th that's when it came in. Mm -hmm. but at first, it was like more of a fun concept. Mm -hmm, it started mm -hmm. out as that. Okay, okay. And but tell me a bit about this uh, political aspect. You have some elements about Marcos and also I felt like there was a critique of how the Filipino government handled the pandemic there, if I'm not mistaken. Well, the pandemic, I think that was uh, quite an inadvertent because during the Marcos regime, there were lots of curfews at mm. the same time. Same, t same thing during the pandemic. So I think that was more of a co coincidence. The Marcos stuff uh it was slowly crept in into the film as we were making it 
it was like um uh i had relatives who fought against marcos and at the same time um i had relatives who worked for marcos so the funny thing is uh, some of the pictures you see in the film were actually real pictures i found somewhere and i just photoshopped them okay all right and yeah it, it all came in like that then it was quite there was this election coming up and bong bong was gonna win some people were saying oh he's not gonna win but you could see it a mile away like he was planning it for six years this uh the son of a dictator gonna win an election it was really something and everybody was so sad about it because it was really terrible <laughs> like the filipinos forget everything we easily forget stuff and that mm -hmm. that element came into the film so mm -hmm. i rolled with it mm -hmm. okay okay and uh, wh what about the interrogation aspect which okay it reminded me a bit of clockwork orange to tell you the truth the way it unfolds oh yeah 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 uh, so a uh, big big inspiration from clockwork orange and other sci-fi interrogation scenes like the one from thx what's that i forget the number i always forget that number 1131 i think mm -hmm. where the character is in a white room and he's being tortured uh i patterned that guy after a certain film director in the philippines unfortunately i can't say his name but he became a prominent government official and he really believes what he's saying he like he thinks he thinks he's doing the right thing for the filipino people despite it be, being propaganda so it's like a misplaced passion of a film director and i wanted it to show through that character it's like uh arts in the bad way <laughs> He's like a bad artist oh, okay. <laughs> used by the government, <laughs> something like that. Okay, okay. And uh, tell me a bit about uh, the location. Where was the film shot? Where are the, those images of the you know nuclear factories or what's in the background in the beginning and what else? Uh, oh, I think that's very interesting because there's no there's no functional nuclear nuclear power plant in the Philippines. So that's a giveaway that's going to be for Filipinos. It's going to be kind of sci-fi because the only functioning nuclear power plant in the Philippines in, is in Bataan and it's been uh, abandoned for several years. The funny thing is we shot the whole film in, during the pandemic. It was the Delta variant, if you remember that, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. everyone was scared and we really had to shoot because uh, we had a deadline to chase. So... You'll be surprised that we were shooting in a subdivision, a small village, mm. and it's next to the ocean. For some reason, it's next to Manila Bay. Mm -hmm. It's a reclaimed area of a swamp. So <laughs> we were shooting in this area. So on one side, you'll see uh, this somewhat industrial aspect of the location. And on the other end, suddenly there's these boats, there's these fishermen, and it's within the city. It's like behind the central business district of the Philippines. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it fit, I think it fit really well with the, what we were trying to tell because um, we wanted uh, the location to be like the outskirts of the city. Like these people, the, these people are working for the, for the factories, for the power plants. So you can see it in their uniforms. And usually in the outskirts of the city, it's like they're, it, uh, they're kind of under they're not developing those areas they don't really care they only care about the central part of the city they only gender the central part is gentrified they leave the outskirts like uh dilapidated mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's a pretty realistic location if you look at look at it in the philippines the rest were my house the studio so what what we had access to during the pandemic it was quite hard Mm -hmm. did, did, did the locals co cooperate in the movie or oh yeah because no one really wanted to go near us during the pandemic <laughs> so it was quite easy to shoot i was really surprised like i was expecting like uh crowds of people uh usually when you shoot in the philippines in the city people will approach you but 
during the pandemic they didn't because they were so scared everyone was so scared of getting sick mm -hmm. okay okay and uh, can, can you tell me a bit about the casting how did that work the casting well Kyrie, the lead actress she was a theater actress that my auntie knew my auntie works for the theater mm -hmm. She's a theater director, and she introduced me to Kyrie, and we we made her audition, and it she she really fit the part. She's actually what, how old is she? I think she's in her early twenties, and mm -hmm. she could pull off a, uh, the look of a high schooler. So that was one of the aspects we were looking into. Aside from that, I didn't want to uh, put put a child's a uh, child's life at risk because we were shooting at in the pandemic so i said we really need an adult <laughs> that looks like a child to be shooting and she's a really good actress because she's been she's from the philippine high school of the arts i don't know if you're familiar with this it's a art school in the mountains mm -hmm. okay. so she's been trained since high school she's a really she's really really wonderful to work with the other actors are friends of mine. So the mom and dad are friends of mine. Most of the actors are actually film workers. Mm -hmm. So the fisherman is our VFX artist. Uh, the guy who uh, voices the catfish is, uh, uh, the girl who voices the catfish is, a, you know, is a, also a local artist. So many filmmakers were doubling the, down as actors too in the film. Oh, okay, okay, uh, okay. But uh, and I wanted to ask you about a couple of specific scenes, uh, particularly regarding the main actress. Was it difficult for her shooting uh, the fight scenes because she gets beaten in the first two scenes of the movie? I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that. That was interesting too because the fight scenes were they rehearsed a lot. So the first fight scene was kind of tricky. The intro scene because. There was lots of rocks around. Uh, we had to clear the location a bit. She got a little, a little bruised, but nothing major. The final fight scene, I think, is the one that's interesting because the guy who choreographed it is the main actor, the the guy who plays the director, mm -hmm. and he did a quite a well, quite a good job. We didn't have we didn't have money for a fight choreographer, so it was just us like, uh, for, uh rehearsing around like what what will work on camera <laughs> mm -hmm. it's a good thing that guy that guy who played the director junjun quintana he's he, he was really good he i think he did a few fight scenes for local tv and other movies so he knew what he was doing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how, how did you work with uh, the blood scene i mean how did you work with the blood uh, the okay the last scene is filled with blood so how do you work that that's that's very funny because there was an oversupply of blood. We accidentally <laughs> made too much, and it was too thick. I think I remember the production, the design department, and the VFX department. The I, I know SFX department. They were saying, "Oh, we made it's too thick. It doesn't want to go into the pump." So we we had to keep diluting it. Then when we were pumping, oh, this is a lot. <laughs> so we just <laughs> rolled with it. I like. like We'll just keep on taking until we run out of blood. Okay. So I guess you had a lot of fun with the production, right? Or was it anxious? I don't know. How was it? I think it was a combination of both because we were shooting in the pandemic. At the same time, it was a fun film. But there's this looming thing behind your head like, oh, no, uh, one, of my, one of us might get sick and it's going to delay us or someone's going to get hurt. And that actually played uh, somewhat a role in how our ending was made because our original ending was quite different than what we have in the film. Mm. Uh, but what happened was one of our actors got sick, but it was not COVID. He got, a, he got an infection from a wound, so mm. he couldn't make it to our last day of shooting. And we, we, we still tried shooting the final scene without him. It kind of didn't work. So we did a, a little rewrite, then uh, that's how we ended up with the strange interrogation scene. Mm -hmm. and, and the fish is a real fish, or is it special effects? Uh, the fish in the basin? 
Yeah. yeah those were real fish. We mm. we had to use real fish because it was too expensive to make a a, a special effects fish. So Ooh. we we used like oh I don't know five or eight fish. Ah, okay. And the uh, an interesting thing is the the part where you where the they flush the fish mm -hmm. down the toilet. Uh we really used a real toilet, but we separated it from the tank below. So uh -huh. when you flush it, it it the fish goes down into a base, and then we just reset. Uh, no, no animals were tortured then during. The no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, but, I'm just. <laughs> but since uh, catfish are like a pest in the in the Southeast Asia, they're uh -huh. like an invasive species. Our production design department uh, eats the fish after. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> they, they, it's, it's going to go to waste. So we, they said, oh, we're just going to eat it after. And there was a period like, oh, we can't eat catfish anymore because we're, we're so sick of it. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay. That's great. That's great. Okay. And uh, tell me a bit, uh, what is your opinion about the Filipino movie industry right now? Are there opportunities, let's say? How is it being a filmmaker in the Philippines right now? It's quite difficult because unlike i i was in europe recently for the berlinale and i was so surprised about the film culture there like the government's very supportive you can be uh you can make a career out of it as an artist but here in the philippines it's quite difficult everything's so what do you say competitive competitive but mm. in an unhealthy way because everyone's vying for funding things like that but at the same time, it's very like, uh, what's this called? Uh, it's like a cottage industry at the same time. It's lots of fun, lots of experimentation, especially if you're doing shorts. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, if you go to the mainstream side of things, they're kind of, if they're kind of making money, they're just making what softcore porn right now. Mm -hmm. It's very popular, actually, since the pandemic. <laughs> uh, there's this uh what's this there's this pattern in Filipino filmmaking like whenever there's a recession or a crisis studios will usually retreat to softcore porn <laughs> it happened in the 80s and in Marcos time and uh, as as uh, another Marcos is ruling us it's happening again <laughs> softcore porn is becoming on the rise cuz it's something easy and cheap to make and at the same time, it attracts subscribers on your channel. Mm. So it's kind of hard, mm. like hard to get an audience, especially for strange films like mine or things like from other filmmakers like Kevin, like Martika. Mm -hmm. Quite okay. difficult. Okay. Okay. And uh, okay. Would, are there any plans of the film screening in the Philippines or has it screened already or? <laughs> that that's a, that's a problem because right now I don't know when we, when we will be screening in the Philippines. I've submitted it to a local festival, but I don't know if they'll accept it. Mm. And I I wish they could. Uh, before the pandemic, there was lots of film festivals that accepted short films. It was quite easy to get screened, but right now there's only two. Uh -huh. It's, Before uh, there used to be what five six there was there used to be a lot, but mm -hmm. now there's two. Then there are other smaller festivals, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll 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 mm -hmm. I'll know. I think by the by mid year if it's gonna get the screening in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And I really want it because because I wanted it's I made it for the Filipino Filipino people. So I wish they can watch it here. But which are the two festivals that still screen short? Is it Quezon City or? Yeah, yeah, Q Cinema and yeah. Cinemalaya. Ah, okay. But Cinemalaya like has a, uh, what's this? They have a time limit for your films. So I don't know if we'll get in. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, all right, okay. And uh, what are you working on next? Any plans? Well, right now I'm trying to develop a series that's horror comedy themed. but. It's still in research stage and development stage. So I'm focusing also on enrolling in uh, workshops, stuff like that, so I can develop myself as a filmmaker. And st yeah, it's still really hard to get funding here. Mm. So I'm thinking I'm, that's still on the back of my head. 
And I don't know if the whole thing I'm doing is really sustainable. <laughs> well, you can always shoot a softcore movie if nothing works, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, what is interesting, I used to work in the softcore industry here. Oh, really? Like, there was no, I, I couldn't find a job as a, I, I, I used to be a nurse, but I couldn't find a job. And there was this opening, oh, uh, you could edit film, you could be an editor here. And they were making softcore, softcore films before it was popular. Mm -hmm. So that was my first job and it was really strange. It mm -hmm. wasn't fun. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay, uh, one last question. How old are you? Because I, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, I, I get I get that a lot. I, I'm now, I'm turning 32 this year. 32, I'm okay. In my 30s. okay. But okay. they say I look like I'm in I'm in a high school, I think, or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, I guess like, like your protagonist, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no it's, a, it's, a, it's the curse of the Asians. <laughs> we, we look young for a very long time. Okay. Great. I guess that's it. Thank you very much yeah. for your time. Oh, thank you so much for, for the opportunity to talk. Okay, yeah. great. This was ASEAN Movie Pass interviews from Panos Kodzathanas, Stephen Lopez. Have a nice day. Bye.